Okay, so I've been playing Kingdom Hearts 3 for probably too long now, and I have learned a lot of cool tips and tricks while trying to turn Sora from a baby swinging keys around into a wacky woohoo French cuisine man. Buckle up, cause I'm gonna teach you something back what Disney man will never teach you. This is Kingdom Hearts 3 Combat Guide. To start off this series that I hope wouldn't be abandoned like many have done before, let's talk about the thing in this game that I have an addiction to, Keyblade Switching Combo. Allowing Sora to equip 3 Keyblades that can be switched around is honestly the best feature this game added alongside air steps. It opened many opportunities for character builds, playstyle, and combos. It also accidentally opened a floodgate for an awesome exploit that is item cancel. I'm not going into more detail that godlike tech someday in the future, no promises. But today I want to talk about its OG weird but okay cousin, the normal keybase switching combo. If you have seen any of my style video, you probably know that I have a weird obsession on doing this constantly even if it slows down the combo sometimes. And yeah, that is certainly a problem. A lot of people don't want to do it because it's quite a long delay. It's a pretty big oversight and I definitely want it to be passed. But like every other game before in the series, they aren't gonna have a team working on patching the game more than once when they are fine and they can move on doing something else. I mean, I want them to do it, but I can only hope they keep keybase switching in a future game. Also, let me equip 4 keybase next time, okay? But even with the jank, it's still worth doing sometime because if you know how it works, it not only can look really cool but also can have some practical benefit like doing more damage or controlling more fights. But before we talk about switching, it's better for me to go into how normal combo works in case some of you who never played Kingdom Hearts game come here for some reason. By matching X button, aka 80% of this entire series, we will saw in different attack sequences. Which move will come out will depend on two factors. One, which number that attack is in the combo, and two, where the enemies are. The game will choose the one that will hit the enemy you lock onto most of the time, and if there's many enemies around you, the game will choose the AoE one. Different form has different moves for these situations, some doesn't have all of them like shield, but in this case, the shield swing attack that is for the close range enemy can track up and down really good, so it does a triple duty in one move. It did better than some form with dedicated rising and diving attack too, that claw one is pretty damn bad. And that's one of the benefits for switching combo. Not every attack in each form are good and some are better for different reasons. Some might deal really high damage really quickly but have a lot of revenge value which make it better for mobs and a giant boss. And the opposite where the move might be slow but if it's still chainable in a combo, it might be worth it to do if the attack has a high damage to revenge value ratio. Sadly, the game doesn't show you any of these values, unless you have the game bible that is Ultimania book, which I have. Maybe I'll be doing a guide on each individual form later, a lot of these gameplay details are really cool. Really wish Kingdom Hearts fans paid more attention to these instead of just translating the story section of the book and then move on. Anyway, aside from different moveset, each move also have a different number of attack in the combo. The base Sora start with 4 and went up to 6 for each combo plus you equipped, while any forms has a fixed combo count that cannot be changed. But it's not like every attack on each number of the combo are the same. Even forms that have the same combo count does act the same way all the time because there are two types of attack, normal and finishers. Normals are the move that Sora will start with and most of the time it will follow the enemy positioning rule. While finisher are the moves that Sora end with, sometimes there's more than one in succession but it will always happen after normals. And it will always be a fixed move regardless of where enemies are. Finisher also have a name and you can check it in the Keyblade ability menu even if you still have no idea which move is which cause Kingdom Hearts is bad at explaining things. When it comes to each form combo sequences, base form start with 3 normals and 1 finisher. From this point on, I'm gonna say the number of normal and the number of finisher now, like 3, 1 from this case. For each combo plus equip, it adds 1 more to the normals, so it will be 5, 1 at max. And then if you equip finisher, it will replace one normal with a finisher for each slot. Speed Slash and Triple Rush share the same slot at the point before the default finisher. The same with Magic Flash and Large Charge at the slot after the default finishers. This means if you equip everything cause the game gives you a bajillion AP boost, the combo will be 3-3s. Three As for the form, the non keyway transformation one like second and double aka the overrated one had the same 3-3 as the max base form, while the underrated one are varied from a really short 2-1 launcher to a really long 4-2 yo-yos. But with the switch combo, even the launcher combo can be longer by combining with other four. So here's how I visualize it. The green dots are normal and the yellow dots are finishers. Each combo format has a different grab and the way the combo goes is, 
I place the three rail graphs next to each other and when the combo begin, you go from left to right. When you switch Keyblade mid-combo, you go to a different rail while still retain the position. It's hard to explain with words, so I recommend you just look at the screen yourself. I'm not good at this. The reason why there's a big gap between normal and finisher is that once you perform a finisher, the next move will always be a finisher. So for example, if you do a 3-3 combo to a 4th move, which is a 1st finisher, and switch to a 5-1 forms, the 5th move will be the last finisher and not the 5th normals. Oh, and the combo will end there too because that's the last move. With the same situation, but switch to 4-2 instead of 5-1, the last finisher will be the second one of that form and not the first one. Oh yeah, and big disclaimer, don't apply this rule or even this grab to a base solar with 1-3 combo. It's super weird, cause the second move supposed to be a finisher, but it's not really, but it still count as a finisher anyway, just ignore it, okay? With this formula, a form with 3 or 4 attacks combo can easily become 5 or 6 with a proper filler. You can do the first 2 attack of the launcher and switch to other form with 6 attack and do the 3rd, 4th and 5th attack of that forms, and then finally switch back to the launcher to make its finisher the 6th attack and the last move. This combo example is also lead to other practical benefit of switch combo, to amplify abilities and stats. Ability like combo boost and magic galvanizer increase attack damage the longer combo goes. That launcher combo example, the last finisher will deal more damage than normal launcher 3 hit attacks, with magic galvanizer equip of course. This might not be as prominent in level 1 run, though I personally think the default stat pro code run is a better alternative since it's the same but with more ability to play around. But elemental form aka the blue one still has a magic galvanizer built into it. With some setup, you can do a lot of damage even with some limitation. Your solar phase 1 to death combo by Genji Yusuki that I have tried to copy and fail also utilize this gimmick. Additionally, it's also linked to your stat as well. The thing is, attack damage in this game can either be physical or magical, and it's scaled with strength and magic respectively, and sometimes form can have both types of attack damage. Make it pretty hard to maximize damage if you want to go full physical or magical build. Oh, and those form are base aura and all the overrated one by the way. Double form have physical normal and magical finisher, and second form is like all over the freaking place. How the hell are you going to build that? But with switch combo, you can selectively choose which move you want to use, and craft the combo with the same damage type, like double arrow gun for the first 3 moves, and then use double form for the rest of the combo, will make it a full magical combos. Now before you min-maxing the damage here, it's better to understand which combo would work and which doesn't. Yeah, we're talking about the jank again. The real reason why it's slow sometimes is because the normal combo has a frame where animation can be cancelled and move on to the next move without waiting to do like a whole animation. With the switch combo, that cancel frame doesn't work. It takes Sora to finish the entire animation to even switch the blade and continue the combo. This means that the attack with long recovery frame is not ideal to switch combo with. The biggest, slowest, and the most chunkiest boy of them all is a shield throw attack in the shield form, which... yeah... On the other hand, there's a plenty of moves that are quick to cancel from, like triple rush, second form, explosion, almost every dual gun move, etc. Or maybe it's not really fast, but the move crowd control in the way that keep enemy at bay for long enough to still be a combo, like second form, early cane burst, and Russian reef, hammer ground slam, almost every dual gun move, etc. Furthermore, you can avoid using some move by changing to magic instead. Water is a great filler for its delay projectile, make the enemy flinch a bit later. And also, casting fire, blizzard, or multi-shot magic type will have a fewer recovery frame for a moving variation than a standing variation. We will be here all day if I list every single move in this game, so let's hope I do that form change guy video thing. Anyway, there's a bunch of other detail I have yet to mention, cause writing a half decent essay is hard, so I gotta dump it all here in the end. So here goes. The circle command or X command if you're Japanese, like Rising Spiral and Ground Baker, reset the combo and act as the first hit of the combo as well. Using a 5-1 base solar setup can create a really long combo if you switch back to a base form before the 5th move and using those 2 attacks. Counter attack and attack of the wrist dodge also count as a first hit of the combo. This attack has no revenge value so it's really good against boss in general so yeah, just use it. When your current combo count is more or equal to the current form maximum number of attacks, your combo will end no matter what regardless of which move it is. 
And speaking of which, the last finisher, no matter which one it is, will not have a dodge or block cancel window. For example, a speed slash at the 6th move after you switch from other forms or whatever, can dodge or block cancel mid attack like a normal speed slash you usually do. Mirage stat form with um, Mirage change your combo count from 3-2 to a whopping 9-1. It can be used to quickly go through the early moves in the combo and go to the finisher really quickly. At least magic ability you get from a Mickey Charm accessory will make the magic combo endless, but it doesn't actually stop the number of the combo, but rather it still counts, but it will never go to the last finisher. So spamming magic with this equip will make the combo count stay at the maximum number combo minus 1, or more accurately at this point in the grab. So the form with 3-2 combo format like Shield, Spear, and Flag are weird in that the last finisher will always be the last move, even if you try to make it the first finishers. This is a minor exception alongside the base form 1-3 combo format I mentioned. And speaking of exception, ultimate form is a big one. And I don't want to add 7 more minutes to this video, so yeah, I'm gonna skip that. And finally, the last cool tip I'm gonna end with, after switching Keyblade during the combo, that combo count will still be retained for a little bit less than a second, in which you can continue the combo after a short pause. During that time, you can move a little bit, switch to other Keyblade, or the best part, jump or fall down to change from ground attack to aerial attack or vice versa. Hey, do you want to use a second form ground combo that ends with a magnet burst? Yeah, you can do that. And that's it for the Switch combo I guess. I probably missed a couple things there, you can mention it in the comments, I might read it. There are a few obscure texts that revolves around switching combo aside from item switch, like base form combo count storage and combo skip buffer, but I want to at least be able to do it consistently before talking about it. And that's it for this video, thank you for watching and see you next time. And next year if I made this video in time for 2020.